Hey, we have introduced officially on eWebs tonight the uh, voice optimized headphones, which come with a little brochure and a vinyl bag, and then the cans themselves in the box. I have <laughs> set out. We set out to I'm, I'm talk about creature comforts, and if you got because both Dan and George have been been experimenting and and critiquing the cans. If you guys talk about the audio quality, and I'll talk about the creature comfort. That sound okay? Sure, sure, sure. Okay, we we did a number of things to make these much more comfortable because you know back in the day, being in a studio, you didn't wear headphones that long. Sometimes you don't wear them at all, or you'd wear one. But at home, for a lot of us, a lot of people don't even have studio monitors, or they live in an apartment, or they live in a scenario where they can't be cranking up volume, so they maybe even mix with headphones, whether you like doing that or not. I mm-hmm. just don't know. Although I do have a client recently, an e-learning client, who specifically requests that you do that, because the e-learning programs they do are all listened to on headphones. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. It's total. I thought... Well, good for her to even think about that, and particularly mm-hmm. anything. She said, please, if you possibly can, master everything on headphones. So I wanted to make something that was different and made more sense. The first thing is they, they weigh a little over a half a pound, but they still have big, 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 big drivers, uh, 48 millimeters, so we've got lots, lots of power. I was flying back from Florida with my wife not too terribly long ago, and she said, what the hell's all over your face? <laughs> I love you too. I, I said, wrinkles? No, no, you have black crap all over your face. I said, well, I, my Bose noise canceling headphones, which are not suitable for voiceover work in any way, shape, or form, but they're great on the plane. After two or three years, the vinyl starts to, you know, flake off. So why is it vinyl? So these, what we've done with these to make them super comfortable and avoid that, this is all leather. The ear cups are leather. The whole top band is sewn, and that's leather. So we avoid that. It's, it's just a nicer feeling on your skin. We went to memory foam here rather than regular foam after my son was telling me about his, what's it called, uh, Tempur-Pedic bed. Oh, Dad, look. Bed is yeah, so- I got one. <laughs> this, this is how sick I am. Look at the bag. Oh, that's really cool. We could use those in headphones. Why not? Yeah. So if you- Glasses, this is really nice stuff because it just wraps, you know, like Dan does right, right, right around. If you like wearing one can, because that's what Dan is doing, this can flip up and pop that one down. I, I prefer that myself. And um, stainless steel, we made, you know, the little marks that everybody has. No one ever numbers them. They're numbered. I know I'm a five. That's my sleep number. <laughs> Put them on. And I like, it's, it's, you know, this is funny, but creature comfort. You either love curly cords, coiled cords, or you like straight cords. I've tripped over too many straight cords, but I never like the ones where the curly cord came out alongside you. It's kind of distracting. So we went for a straight cord. Yeah, married to uh, a huge mesh cord. And these are longer than most. You can get 10 feet out of this. And that's just personal wow. because... My um, whisper room is right over there. We're all one arm paper hangers in this business. So, you know, you record it and they say, hey, Harlan, that's, could you play back track two and three? Sure, hang on. And then I run out here and I play them back and then I run back in there. And so this allows you to do that. Uh, the light, oh, they've got the, you know, the usual gold plated plug so you can do mini or, you know, uh, what do you call the mini or quarter inch? Yeah. Yeah. So that's all. That's the kind of the creature comfort things that I was going after. Once I heard these drivers, when I heard these drivers, they were not in these headphones by any means, but I thought, ooh, ooh, I think for voice, these are good. Because we're not doing gaming. We don't want, what did, how did you put it, Dan? Endorphin producing bass, even though we love yes. to that in our voices, it, but that's not good for this. So I'm really, really thrilled with, with how smooth the sound is. What did you guys think? Well, you know, I, the first time I, I, I listened to them, they were, it was like, why, why is it taking so long for someone to come up with this? And, uh, because I always thought that most headphones are just way too bassy for voiceover. And, yeah. uh, you know, and, and the reason I, I keep one up is because I, I need to hear my own voice in my own environment and, and use this for communication. But these have, 
it's flat across the spectrum. It's not, you know, it's, it's, it, you know, it's got a little bit more mid range to it, but the low end is at the same volume as everything else. So it's not distracting as far as, you know, trying to make yourself sound like really deep and bassy, especially when, you know, you're, you know, if you're Lisa Biggs, I guess. Um, but it, you know, it's, you, you've got it. You've, it's, it's got a nice, even sound to it that doesn't overwhelm you one way or another. But the thing that I really like about it is how incredibly clear the sound is that you actually can hear dimension in the room from these things. It's just something you can't really get from, you know, a pair of, of earbuds or, you know, even, even my, my duct taped, duct taped up sure headphones that I have. I was going to grab those out when you were talking about duct taped uh, headphones, but these have, I, I was listening to George's studio this evening, you know, you know, we were warming up here and I'm like, I can actually hear what it sounds like. What I remember being in that room with you, because it just seems to recreate total reality, which to me is the most important thing because like a good pair of studio monitors, you want to hear exactly what you're putting out. And these headphones do that in spades. I mean, they're really, really nice. It's, you know, it, like I said, it's even across, but you know, there's, there's that, there's a, it's real at each individual frequency and there's a nice separation between frequency. There's no bleeding between them. You hear exactly what is going through your software. And that's what I like. What did you think, George? Yeah, I, I have to agree. I'm, I'm going to a full shot here so I can show some more details because people are asking questions in the chat room. Um, <clears throat> how adjustable are they? Somebody asked. They're pretty, uh, they have a pretty good range of adjustability. So um, if you can see there, that is the range of adjustability on one side or the other. Okay. So they, they, I haven't tried them on my uh, four-year-old's head yet, but <laughs> most headphones are too too big for a kid that size. But uh, I think these are going to work on most people's heads pretty comfortably. Um, another detail I like about the design, one thing I don't like about the Sony headphones, and I'll compare these pretty heavily with the Sony MDR uh, 7506 is because those are so popular and in so many studios. I hate the way the little wire right here on the Sony headphones always ends up getting caught in this part of the uh, in the yoke it always ends up getting stuck here and then when you when the headphones are flipped into position the wire is being pinched between the cup and the yoke and they get worn out and eventually they break now on these headphones the wire is very very nicely um contained inside the yoke here and uh this is really hard to demonstrate on camera but try but the wire comes down, it's inside the yoke, and then goes through the center of the pivot into the ear pad. I mean, again, it's one of those little details, but if you use headphones for years and years, you'll keep killing the Sonys because they'll just keep breaking on you. From a sound perspective, um, again, comparing them to the Sonys, these are much smoother on the top end, where the Sonys tend to be very, very bright and, to my ears, harsh. Um, these are not, these are the opposite of harsh. They're very smooth on the top end. Um, compared to my venerable, uh, biodynamic DT seven seventies, which are about 250 bucks. Um, these are a little bit more sizzly on the top and a little bit more bottom. So these go a little bit further up and down, but they also are slightly overly exaggerated on the, uh, on the bottom and the top. Whereas these are a little bit more, um, honest, you know, more, a little more accurate. The first thing I listened to them, first thing I actually listened to on these headphones was music. I plugged them into my wife's iPad Mini, and I was listening to Spotify. Some, and I was trying to find tracks that I was really familiar with, and um, I was really amazed at how smooth they sound. And again, the bottom end isn't bass exaggerated, but I was watching uh, House of Cards with Kevin Spacey, and it had one of those synthesized, you know, boom sounds that was kind of you know a dramatic scene and you could i mean you could really feel it you could feel the bass on your head the the drivers had no problem reproducing probably down into the 30 hertz range pretty accurately so um again i i'm i'm really i'm really loving them i'm really loving them. i'm getting used to the way they feel for long periods of time so um i think these are a really great happy medium it's impossible to make everybody happy with a pair of headphones they're so oh, yeah. personal, and that's why there's a zillion brands of them now and so many signature series headphones that are out there. 
but these um these do the come the closest I've seen to really making most people happy. So nice yeah. job with these, Harlan. Yeah. Yeah. I the way I would describe them, they're like 